Like we say in law, nemo dat quod not habit, meaning you can't give what you don't have. So Nigeria hush youths are a reflection of our hush leadership. Hush youths, hush leaders. As we celebrate the International Youth Week, I'm tempted to follow in the usual criticism or cliche of our leaders that our youth are not ready for the future or leadership. As it is often said that they would rather watch Big Brother than create big opportunities. But I dare say, no nation intentionally neglects the training of our youth and expect responsible adults. And most of our rulers and public officials who steal what they want and what they will never need, responsible adults to expect responsibility from the younger ones? The answer, you know, is blowing in the wind, as it is a system of garbage in, garbage out. Our colonial leaders created good formative years for our then youth that subsequently made it possible for them to play active role in governance of Nigeria. Alhaji Shou Shagari, Alhaji Ibrahim Waziri, for instance, became federal ministers in their 20s. Matthew Mbu became an ambassador in his early 20s. Colonel Yakubu Gowon became head of state at age of 31 and even got married as head of state. Buhari, who is still president in year 2020, at the age of 77, became a governor of northeastern Nigeria in 1975 at 33 and subsequently president in 1983 at the age of 41. IBB became army chief and subsequent president at less than 50. General Lushego Obasanjo became head of state and retired even before he was age 46, while his deputy, Musa Yaradwa, was in his 30s. The list is endless. Those were the generations that witnessed and benefited from the golden years of the 70s, but were given the opportunity of leadership. They made sure that the generations born in the 80s, 90s, and even now, knows only of a country that had never lived up to its potentials yet. Most often, when they even try to promote the youth, it is the not too intelligent ones that they select and would use to showcase the uselessness of the Nigerian youth, despite the abundance of exceptional youth like Bolahan, Emeka, and Co. Examples are some of the youthful Yaya governors. If you know, you know. <laughs> if the Ziani and her cohort in PDP had not allegedly siphoned most of the monies meant for social infrastructure, and the education of youths, I bet she wouldn't have bothered today about Yahoo Yahoo becoming role models. If APC and our current crop of rulers had resisted the temptation of corrupt enrichment and remained true to their promises to us since 2015, our youth wouldn't be debating Hush Poppy or Big Brother currently. If IBB, Abacha, and their cohort, including some parading themselves to their sense, didn't spend our money buying properties abroad, our youth probably would have been creating and building big business brand today. I can go on and on. While I salute those youth who excel in various fields, including communication, entertainment, theater, sports, education, business, commun community building, mentorship, entrepreneurship, etc., despite the hurdles and bottleneck intentionally created by our harsh leaders, I will not fail to mention that some are indeed very lazy and unworthy to be truly described as youth. I would therefore advocate that for the youth to achieve its potentials and favorably compete globally, the government must intentionally create opportunities, not just for formal education for them, but mentorship and reward system that will be gender, religious, tribe, and cultural discrimination free. Can I just quickly jump in there? Whilst um, because, it's, you know, your advocacy is spot on. I have a challenge, though, with the fact of asking government. Um, my, my relationship with government and the way government is currently structured is that government is extractive. Government is rents here. They will just, you know, I will actually say the less government we place in front of young people, the better the opportunities for young people. Um, I, and I say this because even you see, you see, like we're living in Lagos, the, to survive new taxes, new this, yeah. new levies, new, new challenges every day. Um, so let's allow young people, and we see it, I mean, even in the aid of this COVID period where young people were just sitting bored and uh, the content they were creating was just was magnificent. Mm. Now, 
Lagos State, and very soon other states will jump in. They want a new 5% levy on, mm, on, on, uh, on, on, mm. on, 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 exactly. Mm. Um, so the less government, the less government, uh, I feel it. the better I feel for, the better for mm. that. That's just I, what yeah, I, I, no, I like to say. I agree. I, I totally I agree with you, and I agree with Laboris because that was the same thing. That was the same mm. problem I had because it's the same government that wants to keep the youths dumbed down anyway. So I don't mm. really see that that same government would be so willing to now be offering them the opportunities. But at the same time, I think Laboris did answer it to a degree where he said they need to get up from their chair and they actually need to you know force the government to at least give them something you know, that they can work with. Because I feel like, well, what, what do they even have to work with now? Education is almost next to nothing. I mean, have you heard the youths lately? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so that is my concern. They don't really have the tools, and the only people that they have as role models are the hush puppies and, oh and, and the politicians. Yeah. You well, know? There, there, there are people who are also doing so. There are some people doing so. No, they are, but, but that's not what they're seeing. <laughs> yeah. They want but, to yeah, make I know. money fast. The easy money is, is what is uh, of more interest mm. to them. I'm more worried about the fact that um, yeah. a young, we have a young population right now, can, and we're not man, making can the... You, can you hold your thought for a second? Okay. I, I, I like Aisha. Aisha, are you there with us? Can you jump in quickly? Yeah, yes, yeah. I'm here. Because I, I, I can hear your thoughts. Uh, <laughs> 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 you can. Then, then you can. Now you, can, you, can you know, in okay. truth, it's... Um, so, again, it's always about finding a balance. You know, and we need to find a ba find balance. I agree with the fact that, yes, you know, we need to perhaps to get government out of the way and try as much as we can to get um, to get the youth to become independent. And I also like the argument about um, if you don't take power, nobody is going to give it to you. But unfortunately, whilst we're waiting for all of these things to happen, is that we're losing a whole generation. We're losing them to drugs. We're losing them to crime. We're losing them to terrorism. So I'm not sure that we have a lot of time. And for me, that's what is really frightening about it. But do we really, I mean, what is the answer? I think that part of it is that when you, when you look at even the opportunity that we lose with education, you know, our children go through school and they really come out of it. At the end of the day, you wonder what do they teach them? Mm -hmm. All of the values that they should have inculcated in those young years are not being inculcated. Yes, I lots of argument. People say, yes, it's a parent's responsibility. But I think all over the world, the concept of school is that you put through children, even those that would, were likely to fall through the cracks, through a process and a system. And at the end of it, you hope that they will become useful um, citizens. But I suppose the final point is what was said to the youth. They need to get up because nobody ever gives power willingly, mm -hmm. right? In truth, it needs to be taken. I know that sounds a bit revolutionary, so I think I'll stop there. But, you know, that's just the way I yeah, feel. Was, yeah. And, it, you know, just sort of on a little aside is the argument about um, um, youth, you know, the ones that are given the opportunities to represent the other ones are the ones who are capable. A lot of that also happens, you find, when they give quotas to some women and you wonder why are these the ones they, they, they are picking. So at the end of the day, you know, it's all of us, again, that just have to really stand up against this. Because in truth, how do we... In fact, there was a time I used to feel as if, sorry, very quickly, as if, like, we used to treat our youth as if they were endangered species. Didn't you notice the way they talk about them was like the youth? And you're wondering, they're part of this whole collective, you know, almost as if there's some group of, I don't know, aliens yeah. that just dropped us. We are a huge population of very young people. What are we doing? We have, we have all the young people, yeah. you know, and, and my, my, my worry is that the same way they are huge now and we're not deploying them, we're not harnessing, harvesting and deploying the energy of the youth, it's the same way they will get old and mass mm -hmm. and it's a huge burden yeah. if we have not, you know, do the appropriate thing when they were young. Yeah. Uh, ask, ask about the baby boomers and the impact in those economies when those baby boomers are now becoming old. Mm. It's, a, it's a huge burden on the society. That is why today, when they are still young, we must take, make the best of them. So ends another power-packed edition of The Advocates. Continue to advocate with us on our social media platform on Facebook.
Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, and on Twitter and Instagram, at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. And to catch up with previous broadcasts, simply go to plustv.com forward slash the advocates. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. See you same time next week, same channel. But till then, let's keep advocating for a better society and then leave out the yo. Thank you. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's it, it does. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.